I'm with you. <laughs> I'm following you. All right. Uh, welcome to uh, Catch the Vision. My name is Mike. This is John. Um, what are we talking about today, John? <laughs> Where are we going, anyway? <laughs> I think we're talking about uh, faithful, right? Yeah. That's the word. We stopped there, I think, and okay. touched a little bit about that. Of course, um, everybody kind of knows if you're faithful, you are, and if you're not, they know you're not, you know? Kind of one of those things you can't really fake. Well, what, how do I mean? One of the things that comes to mind when I think about this is like, um, how do you actually get, like, um, I want to say, like, you know, how do you show faithfulness? But, like, like, how does this come about? I think the word continuing, continual, a continuer, you know, uh, someone that continues, someone that keeps on keeping on. I mean, I know the Lord does for us. He keeps on keeping on. He's faithful. He never quits on us. He doesn't. Uh, I like the. There's no variableness or shadow of turning with him. He doesn't. If he started something, he finishes it. Uh, his word doesn't return to him. Boy, he just keeps going on. I think faithfulness has something to do with keep going. You know, that's that's one way of looking at it. I mean, I know he's faithful. He's always. But that word always means. He keeps on going. He keeps on continuing. I like to think the fact that if he started a good work, he'll continue it till he's done. He's a continuer. You know, that's the way I look at faithfulness anyway. Yeah, it's um, when I think about it, like kind of the root being, okay, you got faith. And faith being, um, I've heard some really good ways of describing this, but, you know, if I were to just crudely surmise it, um you have high belief in. That's that's kind of generally what faith is. And faithful being, okay, you have a lot of belief in this this thing. And um, what that what that really means is you kind of know about the person um, regardless of the situation. So the situation can bend the way that we see things, especially you see like a person. But this is like, okay, well, yeah, I see that, but... I know this, you know, this person and what, what they're like. Yeah. Well, you know, Billy Graham, nobody questions Billy Graham. He's being faithful. Keep on going till his death, really, till his end. 95 yeah. or whatever he was. And, and um, but in the news today is, I think there's four or five well-known men who have fallen. Hmm. Who stopped. Who quit continuing. Oh, I see. And uh, they like, not only did they fail, but, you know, they quit. Several of them quit. Not all of them wanted to, I heard. I read a few on a couple of them. I won't mention their name, but uh, they want to keep going. But uh, the church said, no, you're out. So I don't know if they quit, but to continue is not necessarily not doing this, but just, you know, doing this as you're going toward the, you know, you're up and down, but you're, yeah, up, you're yeah, still yeah. going, you know, you're still, you're still continuing. So why is faithful leadership characteristic? Why is an aspect of leadership? Yeah. Well, for that reason, if you're going to be a leader, you can't be, you can, well, it depends on the relationship you're in, because some people, you fall, that you're no good. You're up, yeah, hey, yeah, you're yeah, really yeah. good. You're, you know, no good. Hey, you're up good. Um, but leaders have to be faithful. They have to keep continuing. You know, you never quit. You never stopped. You were attacked. You were knocked down. You were falling. You, you know, you flubbed a couple times. You made a mistake, but you kept on going. Mm. You yeah. know. I think I would respect the guy that kept on going more than I would a guy that quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about the conversation we had just before we started that, you know, when, when you start something, you got to do it a long time. You, you got to keep at it. You got to keep at it because you can't like, um, like, for example, um, like when I started like growing food, that was over 10 years ago. And every single year we have done it. And the part that's kind of crazy about it, so, you know, ignoring all that, so what that's allowed me to do is I have, like, a dominant voice about this stuff. People come and ask me all the time. They, I think they value me almost more than I value me about these things. But they... That's not a bad thing. <laughs> they, can, they can, they realize that, um, again, I've noticed this, that with competence, that you're competent in something, 
you talk fundamentally different about a topic than other people. Whereas people, let's say they're at the same kind of lower competence level, they're going to have the same kinds of things that they'll talk about. With competent them. or confident? Competent. Competent, yeah. You can do, like you asked me before we came on, do you know everything about this equipment? Yeah. I, yeah, I do. He's got stuff all over the place for him. So <laughs> So I know about this stuff. Yeah, I know every single piece of this equipment way too much. I mean, to, to some extent, to some extent, I may not know like what the name of that connector is that connects that power to the top monitor there. I don't know the name of that technical connector, but I know that's a specific connector for that kind of thing. Well, I would so say I could go that's find competent, it out. yeah. But uh, I, I mentioned the competent thing because um, – when you do something long enough and you become competent about it, you you engender faith. Clearly, I'm not going to just quit growing stuff. If anybody talks to me for like two seconds, they're going to find that out because through thick and thin, we're going to we're going to rotate what we're doing. Like right now, uh, you know, we lost one of our main garden beds because uh, our our neighbors moving and all this kind of stuff. Okay, we're just going to move. We're just going to go somewhere else. That's like. It's just not a thing, and the, the world's not falling apart. And this is not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh time <laughs> I've had to put a new garden bed in. It's just, it's just not. Yeah. Well, if you do it long enough, too, you're confident. Correct. Yeah, you gain confidence as well as yes. conf confident. You know. So um, they go, they go in her hand. Now, some people try to hack this, right? So I'd call that you're, you're drifting a little bit out of leadership and started going to manipulation where you say, oh, um, so long as you have the highest amount of confidence, then that's going to you know, win the discussion or you can win people over. It, that only works for so long. Well, you've mentioned this a few times about manipulation. Yeah. And that's another thing we'll get into later on the pitfalls but of leadership. But uh, in the in the... In the vacuum, we have. I had asked this leader one time. I said, "Why are you doing this? Why are you pastor this church?" Well, because I feel like I'm supposed to, or I feel like I'm called, or I feel you know I got the job, and blah blah blah. And I go, "But but why? What's the why in your mind while you're here?" Yeah. And he was trying to tell me the why, and I said, "Well, aren't you keeping going? What's going on? I mean, the church is going on, and you're in the middle of it as a leader, and you're trying to keep that going." Yes. So really, you're just keeping the gears of an organization going. But what are you doing? You know, and that uh, sometimes it's very hard for leaders to separate. Just be themselves and be a leader and be competent and confident and true and faith, all these things we said. But instead, oh, no, we can't do that. The church organization would suffer. So we do this to get people to... And that word "get people to" is a manipulation. Oh, get yeah. people to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to yeah, say yeah. get people to, that's manipulation. You're yeah, it's doing this to maintain an order, a certain kind of thing. And I'm not against leaders that do that. I think that a lot of guys don't know any better. And I would I just think say a lot of guys are immature. I would just say that word is um, like a caution word. I don't think it's it's necessarily bad, but you're you're now drifting into. You better make sure you're. You've got their interests at heart. You're getting them what they want to get. Not just the organization yeah. kind of thing, but yeah. Correct. Yeah, I think that's important, but I mean, a lot of guys don't. They're more conservative. Don't upset the apple cart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rather than sitting there and shine and take care of the apples and make them look good, we're worried about upsetting the cart. Yeah. And that can be dangerous. Well, of course it can. And it can be, you're propagating the actual order, the method, technique of a company, of a group or whatever, rather than doing what the Lord, I mean, Jesus was not trying to maintain a group. No. He called a group to him and they did, they turned the world upside down, the world as they knew it. That's great. But he wasn't manipulating them. You know, he was changing their minds and their hearts and leading them. And it's hard to separate because you could say, well, he did this and this. That kind of got him going this way. And you, you might want to say, well, I guess you could call that manipulation. But it was all for their good. It was all for the glory of God. It was, you know, he kept on, kept, he kept on his track. Hmm. And uh, I think that's important. And a lot of guys, a lot of leaders today are 
maintaining an order, a method, For a sure. technique, like you might say a Roman Catholic church, the priest is not trying to stop the church or stop the order of the service or anything like that. He's, he's doing what he's doing. He may be a great priest. I know some fantastic preachers, priests, but uh, they will not violate the order or cause that to stop or slow down. They want That's like paramount in their mind. And then you lo- I lose confidence in the person as a leader. Yeah. Well, you're doing this to keep this going. You're not really... <laughs> I'll say for me that this topic is catnap. Is what? Catnap. Yeah. And the reason why it's catnap is I've always <laughs> posed a question, when are we going to find a CEO who's willing to destroy his own company? That's a good question. Never. Not in this... Not in this... World. order yeah and um there's a lot of companies that should be destroyed they should be absolutely just cut in half they should be obliterated and instead they're they're just doing the same and more and the question is why like well, why, of course why, some are why waste first... your time who cares because that's where they get their money that's where they get their, their purpose or something yeah, I, I agree you know and and so <laughs> they say why why quit it we might as well keep on keeping on because that's what we do well, okay, like but nobody that, questions. the kingdom has to be a little bit different. Like, the kingdom has to be where the leader is not committed to just a, for, a, a order or a method, but he's got to be committed to the leader who is Christ and a story. I mean, yes, an order and a certain kind of thing will take place in the church. We call it the New Testament church. We're trying to make a New Testament church. Well, good luck with that. I mean, that's hmm. nice. But I've been to places where they're saying, come here, we're a New Testament church. And I go around looking around, I go, you're not a New Testament, you don't even come close. But to their minds, we're trying to make this a New Testament church, and that's the thrust. That's the vision. Okay. We say, Catch the... And I'm saying, that's not the vision, guys. That's not the vision. I mean, it's really hard to separate, but a you're, vision... You're, you're talking about, in this particular case, you're talking about like a pastor or whomever yeah i'm in a religious world yeah, you're in a secular yeah, yeah, yeah. world but yeah so you're you're talking about a pastor who the the goal is the church as in the body as in and i don't i don't mean these figuratively i mean literally as in the building with the people and don't upset the Mac apple cart yeah again the same old which saying. is of course it that now now the the funny thing the reason why i sort of bring this up uh i'm i'm totally fine like um uh, I like that you're coming from the perspective that you are. Part of the reason I'm sort of coming from a secular world, but not. I come from like a, a very solid like understanding of leadership itself, which is what we're talking about. Like, yeah, and I think now, you're more general in, in scope. And, definitely yeah. more general. And and why I mention that is I know for a fact that these same things apply to all cases. And so when I say these things, I'm looking, I'm actually looking to find the universality of all these things. Yeah. Like, and so the reason why I'll mention, for example, the CEO is even the same thing as that, because it is the same thing. Uh, the purpose of a company is not the company. The purpose of a church is not the church, as in the building, Make one or- th- that kind of thing. I mean, certainly I understand the figurative terms, mm-hmm. and I'm putting those to the side, but the literal terms, which is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to create a new test. Okay, well, who cares? Yeah. Why don't we talk about the people? What well, are they doing? Where are they going? I think CEO or pastor or spiritual leader, if they're only trying to keep the method going and keep the technique going, they've yeah. got to have blinders on for the other stuff on the other sides. On the side, they're 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 like those horses with the blinders yeah. keeping going down the street. Yeah, uh, uh, that's well and good for a horse <laughs> delivering <laughs> milk. The same day, same thing every day. The horse is not distracted. Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is, is that when I meet a leader like that who's got blinders on, I feel like he's, I mean, you you look at yourself out there. You look at your leader and he's got blinders on. He's not interested in anything else. But what he's talking about or, or the technique or the method or the, or the, or the uh, what do you call them, uh, the hierarchical thing or whatever. Yeah. That's what is, that's, then you lose confidence in him. Suddenly, he's a different kind of leader. He may not be all elite, uh, like that one movie I was called, She's Not All That. Well, he's not all that. You know, and, and we have to find a guy that is really um, 
secure in who he is. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring. I want to talk about that too. We that, get. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up again because this is this is relevant to this point. What we're describing is actually management. Like again, it's this is just management. The notion of keeping again things and materials. Uh, following a process, that's literally management. That's management. That's why that's why it drives me crazy when leadership and management get merged together because it's just not. <coughs> it's a and that's why we say thing. there's a void. There is a void because we know what a real good leader is, but when we got a manager, we can say, yeah, he's a man. He manages. I mean, I managed the Burger King of twenty some yeah. people before. I, I managed it, but I was no leader. <laughs> yeah, I just managed that organization. A pastor literally doesn't need a building. He doesn't need a building. At but all. But if they have an edifice complex where they got to have a building, and they got to maintain <laughs> that building, you understand? Now I, now a, a whole different thing is taking place. And he's managing yes. the situation. Ma ma managing a look, a process, a how, how the thing how the thing goes every single week, the expectations yep. of people. It, it is true that these things do matter, or they can matter. So, for example... Managing um, as a leader, you might want to take on managing the expectations of people. That's that that's a that could be a very valid thing to do. But where that becomes the totality, where again you're talking about like a particular kind of church, a style of church. That's yeah. That's just you're you're missing the point. Yeah, What's the point? I hear what you're saying. I I I come from it this way. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's where I come from. I come from, uh, I met leaders that are leaders, and I met a lot of people that have met them, and they want to follow them. Yes, that's and right. And I've met guys that are managers. Nobody wants to follow them. Yes. And so I'm saying, what happened there? Where's the disconnect? And so we have popular, dynamic managers. Wow, he that thing is mad. You look at a, I got a house in mind where the place is, I mean, you can tell when a fly lands on the roof. Everything is so manicured and so perfect. Oh, man. It's managed, but nobody, everybody looks at it like, eh, you're so clean, you're too clean. Yeah. And so we lose. Well, that brings in certain kinds of people. Certain kinds of people are attracted absolutely. to that that are very, that are very stuck on surface level stuff. That's absolutely. They definitely, anybody. <laughs> Other people who are, let's say, functional types are going to go on that and be like, this is weird. I'm probably going to get yelled at if I make a mess. <laughs> like, I'm not interested in this. Well, the next one we're going to talk about is servanthood. Yeah. Servant. And there's a difference between serving. I remember uh, Paul Johansson said to me a long, long, now it's 40 some odd years ago, that no one in their right mind rejects a servant. Someone to come to you, they might sell you a service. You can reject them. But I'm come here, I'm going to be your slave for all day. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Even if you tell me to go away and not bug you, I have to go away. I am your servant. Yeah. Nobody goes, we don't want those people. Yes, you do. <laughs> if you're smart, you go, wow. I mean, nobody does that. When's the last time somebody comes to you? So I'm going to be your slave. Yeah, it's true. I'm going to be your servant. But a servant, leaders, servant leadership, a lot of people have talked about this over the years, um, is very a uh, different kind of leader. He's he's willing to not be thanked and not have his name up there in lights or even on the church sign. You know, he's willing to do that, but he's also um he's leading. He he's maintaining a purity and an attitude and a, all the other uh, aspects we talked about leadership. He maintains that, but he maintains it uh, toward the one that called him, not for any ulterior motive, if you want to call it that, or or or, or agenda. And I mean, how many people in politics right now are full of agendas? <laughs> Give me a break. So, we're, I mean, we're trying to do well, this. Well, hold, hold on. I'm, I'm paused for like two seconds on that. The one thing about that, though, there are some politicians that have an agenda, but that's why they're elected, that they are actually a servant to that agenda. Yeah, and I'm saying yes, true. And, and some will say he's a great leader because he sticks to that agenda. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I yeah. might say I might say he's a great manager. He's committed. For sure, to, I would totally agree with that. Committed to his uh, agenda, but a leader serves. And this is where you see the disconnect. When you start asking a, a leader to serve, 
uh, we get people a little more reluctant. And I'll be honest with you, there are times I didn't want to serve the people I were with. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to serve them. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't want to serve them. They had a bad attitude. Yeah. And I really didn't like it. And a lot of them I didn't like. But when the Lord spoke to me about serving them, I had to do a little, I had to kind of eat crow and be a leader and maintain what I was believing in, maintain what I was saying, whether I liked it or not and whether they liked it or not. And that's a different story. That's servant leadership. That That's where you begin to serve you know, uh, some people say, and we got to, this is, a, I was just talking to my brother about the back and forth a little bit on writing, but we have a definition, a humanistic definition of things, and then we follow that. So, like the humans say out there, don't get me wrong, I'm a human too, but say that, you know, if you're not loving, forget it. You must be always loving. You never cannot be loving. If you're going to hurt someone, Did you're I, not loving. I'm not following so, that person. On and on and on. And I'm going, wait a minute. That's your definition of loving. That's yeah. your definition of leadership. That's yeah. your de- And humanistic definitions are very detrimental to the truth because they're humanistic. They're I mean, look at that. I mean, here, biblical. here, you know, and certainly, you know, what do you, what does one mean by loving? Because it's such a big difference. I think we actually have talked about this before. A little bit. But like... Um, I think about all the teachers in school that <laughs> I liked, every single one of them. I, I actually know here's a better way to describe it. I thought about not too long ago, um, just the general thing of who do I remember? Just in general, I talked about that with my book. Like, why do people's names stick out? So I, I asked the question, like, which teachers do I remember from growing up in school? And the only ones, there's maybe one or two that are exceptions to this because they had their own particular thing. The the every single one of them were ball busters. Every single one of them were tough. Yes, and I liked every one of them. And yeah. I don't know if I necessarily wanted to like I'm them. I'm thinking back, but the in ones the that end, are the toughest is the ones I remember. Every single one of them, and have a positive view of that person. It's a good every point. It's every a good single point. one of them. Yeah. Um. And, the, and leaders too, the leaders that weren't afraid to yes wield the whip. That's why I'm not. I like, think Jesus. Dude, whipped. I'm not gonna. You know, it is interesting. Jesus went in the temple with whips. They say, mm-hmm. okay, you read the scripture, and he went with his whips and cords and emptied the temple because they were selling goods. In oh the yeah, temple. yeah. Okay, and so people were saying, yeah, he went through with the whips, but he only whacked desks and tables. Where do you read that? You can't say. But if I come in with a whip, <laughs> I'm hitting somebody. You understand? <laughs> and so was he. I mean, it wasn't like. Killing, he wasn't killing, but he was getting their attention. Yeah, you want a piece of this whip? If you do, stay in this temple and sell <laughs> stuff because I want you out of here. This is a house of prayer, not a house of selling. Yeah, so the whip, you know, it talks about Jesus wielded, he had a scepter. <laughs> you know, the shepherds had their rod, their rod was to whack sheep and to hook them, keep them from jumping off the cliff. So we got to stop the humanistic definition of leadership. This world is way too tough to to just <laughs> have that kind of squishy nonsense. Just to be just I mean, we're, we're attacking something that is very valid here, a void of leadership and a, a vacuum of leadership, like you called it. Yeah. But probably more importantly, if I were to say anybody, we're on a blog, we're trying to share this, is pay attention to... The humanistic definition. Well, this church isn't very loving. Well, according to who? Yeah. You know, and I went to a church, they, well, they're all about making themselves big deal. Really? They give $6 million a year, they're a big church, $6 million a year to missions. And not just to missions, send it off, who knows where, but to specific missions, helping a blind school, helping. And so... Would you say that was loving or no? You know, what's your definition? And I think definitions are very important because, especially in servant leadership, you know, that takes some defining. It does. It takes some defining. One th- I actually wanted to jump in on this. Um, I really like this topic, servant leadership. Um, the first time I actually came across it, there is a chain restaurant uh, that's from North Carolina, and it used to be called Andy's Cheesesteaks. And now it's called Highway 55. 
So I, uh, we went to Highway 55 a couple years back, and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go go to their website or whatever. And I'm that, <laughs> that weird dude who goes to like, oh, about the company. And so I'll start going looking and looking at leadership and all this kind of stuff. And so when I did that, basically I found that like their entire kind of back end kind of marketing about their company is about servant leadership. And so I started reading about it. I was like, wow, this is actually really, really interesting. But that, that's where I kind of came into this. But what I wanted, like after thinking about this topic, after seeing and observing it out there, I really think the easiest way to actually see and evaluate, are you in a servant leadership situation, is just really simply, on average, which direction do the eyeballs of people go? Do they go up or do they go down? If you want to look at it like a kind of pyramid, and the base of the pyramid would be like uh, those who are served by the organization. So if it's a business, it'd be like customers. That'd be at the base of the pyramid. And then at the top would be mm -hmm. like the CEO or whatever. And so the question is, are the eyeballs going down or are they going up? And it's really that simple. If they go up, then you do not have a servant leadership organization. You have every regular organization. But if they go down, you have a servant leadership organization. Yeah, and I think if a, ser if a leader, if you can say, they are serving me, or if you can say, no, I am serving them, you know, there's a definition. Because I think a leadership, a true leader, servant leader, is serving. I mean, he might have to put the apron on and serve table. He might have to uh, shine these guys' shoes. Because the guy that shines them for money didn't show up. I'll do it. And puts on thing and he shines the guy's shoes. And he's the president. He's the leader. Yeah, I agree. So that's a servant leader. Am I serving you or are you serving me? You know? that's, why that, that's why I, I like this in, in that I can say to the people, look, pastor is a title to do some managing. I agree. And to, to be kind of like the, out in the forefront. But really, I'm serving you. I'm here to serve you. And boy, that's hard. I don't yeah, want you to hard. think that's easy. I mean, you can tell when you follow a leader if they're a servant, if they're a servant or not. Yeah. I mean, you don't go to a person and say, I think he's a wonderful servant. Anybody there long enough will go, I don't think he is. They know. They can tell. Well, do you? Are you? Are uh, does he insist on you serving him? Oh, yeah. Or does he insist on serving you? Oh, no, they don't say. So people pick up on that. It's not something that can be hidden. Mm. I'm sorry, but because <laughs> we all know we went somewhere and we saw a leader who was a servant, and then we went another place and we saw a leader who was not. We were serving him. Yeah. So I think what you're saying is, is very important. I think it's important for us to realize, I mean. And this is stuff that has to be actually, in my, my, my opinion, it's got to be trained slash brought out in the open Absolutely. slash known about because people this isn't i really don't think this is a very natural behavior for people to do no maybe for some it it's a little bit more but in general it's not and so it requires a culture creating a culture where people go and they do this kinds of stuff now it, it helps if in a situation like like i imagine imagining like any just kind of regular the corporate type world, you have like a manager and you got like workers or whatever. And the question is, is whether or not the manager is looking at what's going on with the workers and then asking them, is there anything I can do for you? Or seeing like what they're working on and going like, oh, they're about to run out of this material. Let me go get that and bring it back so that they don't have to, you know, they're not gonna be blamed for not being productive or this, that, or the other, you know, and if they're doing that versus give me status. That's a, that's a huge one because almost always the gimme status means I'm going to go give status to somebody above me. Mm. And it's just that, again, that's that bottom going up versus the top going down. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the only way that, I mean, servant leadership is actually quite difficult because um, to be very effective at providing, for example, like the materials for the people that are beneath you, um, you have to know what the hell's going on. It goes back to us talking about like, uh, being hip and up to date and like yeah, you know with it update and with it yeah. you 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 have to know what's going on and that's where you got to be competent you got to know what's going on i've seen a lot of people yeah um there's a person i know um who's not super close to me but every time we go and see this person they're just 
there's something about them that's really disconnected with other people and they try to be very helpful, but they could never be helpful because they don't know what's going on. They don't even know what it would take to be helpful. Yeah. So that's... I, and, and, and you see that happen a lot. Yes. And you know, I, I, I like, I don't, I'm going to say something you won't like. So who are you? Who do you think you are, John? But I want to say something. In, in my experience of over 50 years, and actually since 1970 I got saved, so been all those years in some kind of ministry, big or small, uh, busy in that way, um, I can say that if you, even Paul said, if you're going to put a leader in this group over here, a brand new group, don't put a novice. Oh. Don't put a novice in there. Why not? Because you'll fall under. Because the, the devil will puff them up and knock them down. You got to be a, so. You have to go through some real knockdown, drag out fights with the devil, and you got to be some. We used to call it seasoned. seasoned if you're not, if yeah. you're not seasoned a little bit, you, you know. I mean, this brand new pastor. He's 23 years old. He's got three kids. He has all he can do to manage his own home, and he's got a congregation of 100 people. Seriously. I mean, that's a novice. I know you don't like that, but the truth is, um, in any given situation, I hate to say this, but I would rather see me in there seasoned and can work with the situation than a brand new novice who's probably going to end up being, if it gets really successful, I mean, some of the worst things that happen to uh, the young leaders is success. Mm. That kills them more than failure. Because they're gung ho, they're not going to fall, they're not going to fail. But they get success. Oh, we got a fifty more people this year, and it goes to their head, and suddenly down he goes. And we go, how come he's going so well? How come? Because he's a novice, because he's fallen into the condemnation of the devil, which just means the devil has puffed him up to knock him down. And uh, if you ever notice, he's always trying to make you better. You can get better if you worship me, Jesus. You can get better. I'll give you the kingdom. You can get better. You're better. You're better. And that's what killed them. That's what killed these leaders. Leaders, look at five in the news now are great leaders, great churches, fantastic, great, great, great. Down they go. So how do you become not a novice? How do you well, go from saying, how do you how do you kind of novice to not novice? Yeah, <laughs> I mean to me that's the most well, obvious thing, right? It, 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 it's a money thing, you know. If you make me no, so no, really you got to have experience. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. There's got to be some experience because you run into something and you don't know what to do because you've never been there before, and then you start seeking what to do. That's all well and good to a degree, but you're the leader. And so, so counsel is very important. Well, my my you know my my take on this is um, the Marine Corps borrowed from the Army this like uh, I think it's like uh, the principles of leadership, and one of them is um, you know deploy your personnel within their capabilities. And the reality of that is is well you're you're you may be a novice at this, but you're not a novice at this. Yeah. And so that's the thing that you're in charge of, and you really ought not try to take this on until you've moved up the ladder, so to say. And it's not really a ladder, but... I mean, that's yeah. legitimate. It's from I experience that, to experience. Yeah, I think that's legitimate. And now, a, a seasoned man of God is going to be through a lot of stuff. You know, I mean, I'm just the way it is. I mean, I don't know a seasoned man of God that hasn't gone through ups and downs and no money and lots of money and, and no people and a lot of people and, and no results and a lot of results. I mean, I've seen them. They've been <laughs> in and out of that. So they got experience... A novice, he don't know. He's never had either one. He's just like, uh, what do we do now? And so that's a dangerous kind of thing. I'm starting and, to, I'm starting to find that this podcast is, it's very triggering. Very what? <laughs> triggering. Because <laughs> you, as you're saying these things, I'm just like, well, I'm there's hoping so, there's so many experiences that flash before my eyes. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Well, me too. Uh, as soon as I'm saying, <laughs> really, this, I remember really? a church I was in, and 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 here's the other thing. A novice is like this. When my first church, I was Kit's brother. Mom's son, <laughs> an, uh, Craig's uncle. I was everything but a man of God. I was everything that they knew me humanly in a humanitarian kind of thing. But I mean, I was everybody but a man of God. And Jesus said, a, a prophet's not without honor except in his hometown. So I was in my hometown for five years, but I was never anybody. I was never nothing. Yeah. I was, oh, I'm the pa oh, you're pastor. Yeah, but you're a kid's brother. You're this. Uh, you know, they, they would all know me as the regular guy that they knew me in school. 
And and family's worse because family always remembers what you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't recognize what you become. <laughs> you know, and if I become something, family goes, well, you know, I know him from way back. Yeah, but he moved on, okay? You just, just that you haven't moved on. And then, by the way, you're moving on, and I'm supposed to recognize you're moving on, but you don't recognize that I moved on. So family's a problem, too. Yeah, but, I would definitely agree with that, this, 100%. That, from novice to experience, you got to go through that stuff. <laughs> the, word, the, the the phrase I was thinking, you know, I've known you since you were a knee high to a grasshopper. Yeah, you're, you're, you're <laughs> knee high, buddy. <laughs> it just makes it like <coughs> I've had experiences, certainly with my own family. I'll, I'll never forget this one time when I was like 19 and my uncle, he tried to pull that on me. Like, oh, I remember when you were like six years old. And he Common. just he, he got a reply that he was unprepared for because <laughs> I'm not six years old anymore. Yeah, I'm, duh. Dude, I'm yeah. 19, 20 years old in the Marine Corps. Like, yeah, you, really. You can't say something like that and me not like absolutely destroy you. Yeah, and then we but, and then we don't like you said from the army, the Marines, the, you know, then we don't recognize the guy. Three tours of duty, he can't vote. Hello. Am I missing something? We Three tours of Dewey, and he can't do this, or he can't do that. You know, you have to be 21. You have to oh, you, yeah, you have yeah, to be yeah, this. Yeah, you have to yeah, be yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, wait a minute. If this guy did three tours of duty, I won't even go to that place, let alone do tours of duty. I'm not yeah. going there no, if on a debt, on a, on a bet, or for a million bucks. This guy's been through it, been there, done that, lost friends. It's time for him to take whatever reins he feels like taking. I'm not going to stand this way. Yeah. But we do that. We we say, well, and as an organization, again, we say, well, he's never this. He's never done that. He's never done. And so we exclude him as a leader. If you think about this and say, no, he can't be in charge. He can't do this because he doesn't meet the criteria, our criteria, what we say a leader is, what we say the, the, the boss is. And suddenly... Uh, the order is more important than the person. <laughs> I had to learn that the hard way because I valued the order or the placement or the or the status or whatever more than the persons, and I lost the person. No. Oh. And once I lost them, well, what's the point? Yeah, what is the point? <laughs> well, John John Maxwell he has this really good saying, and um, you know people don't care how much you know they until they care they know how much you care. Yeah, it's a really good one. Um, it's true. Uh, I'm, it is you true. Know, I'm glad. I'm glad I heard that because I needed to hear that because I'm normally more of a, like I know about the this or the that or the whatever, but you can't really unlock that um, and or that that capability or skills are unlocked if there's not that solid connection of like well I care about the topic or whatever it is, then that person becomes unlocked to go do whatever. Yeah. Um, and so thinking about that, it's like, okay, you know, and again, why this, why this matters, I'm, I'm more of a, a thing person, a functional type. Yeah. And so for people, people, um, I'm actually thankful that many people, people can get over <laughs> my stuff. It takes a little bit of time, but eventually they realize, well, no, they actually care way more than I do. Yeah. Well, that, there you go. Well, well you and I'm I just, know a couple, we were with them the other night and we know this couple. They're people people. They like people. They want to help people. They want to serve people. Yeah. They can't help it. Yeah. You know I mean? They're mostly, pretty much can't help it. It's just the way they are, and they, they know the value of that. Yeah. Uh, and you learn to find, you know, if we talk, take this back a little bit, catch the vision we got on here, and we're, we're talking about the, the void of leadership. If we reel back a little bit, you know, frankly, frankly, I think... Most leaders out there, I feel for because it's not an easy job. To no, be, it's not. To put in a place of leadership. It's not easy. And we say we got a void of it. We do. We got a bunch of guys out there trying, uh, managing, doing whatever, but they're lacking. And we, 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 we're looking for those leaders that are, that are all these things we were talking about. So I'm, I'm looking at a leader. Right now in my mind, I'm looking at a leader and I'm going, Man, I wish that guy would resign and go do something else for a while. He might learn a lot more than he is going through this. True. And this this guy was reject. He built the doubled the church, and he was doing great, having a great guy to come in and speak. And the church decided, the board decided to get rid of him. So they said, "Well, we don't like what you're doing. We don't like how you do." And they got rid of him. And down he went, discouraged, bummed out. And a year before that. 
I said to one of my friends who was a friend of his, I said, if he'd have, if he'd have resigned and went to work for an actual organization like Samaritan's Purse or or a secular business or whatever for a year or so and really picked up a whole bunch of other stuff, yeah, he would have been a lot more equipped to deal with these people because really what he needed to do is stand up and say, look, I'm in charge and I'm going this way. You decide if you want me before. And I've been that place. I've been there. Yeah. And when I did that, those that don't want to go with me and where we're going, get up and leave. Two people left. And the other 45 stayed. I had to do that because there was a point where I was being challenged. So, I mean, had I been in some other kind of situation, I would have probably, probably not done it that way. But I didn't. I wasn't. This was brand new to me. And so uh, I had the... I, I'm also not a guy that's given to people's opinion, so I didn't really care if he liked me or not. I was not, I was never that kind of guy. Yeah. But I just I just had to call a spade a spade and say, look, this is the way we're going. And so some guys need to learn things on the outside that they never could have learned on the inside. Yeah. Of leadership. I'm sorry, but it's true. And when you say it novice, these are the people that have been through something, some things. They got seasoned. They got experience. They've got uh, they've got some some wherewithal and some know-how that helps them through certain things. I wonder if this is, you know, I somewhat don't mesh with this. I know this is all true, but I wonder if this is like, this is primarily like a people person kind of problem because like, you you know, you're talking about, um, 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 caring about what they think or not. And a lot of people, people, they really do care about that. That's like a big deal. They, I mean, you got to think all the effort that they're doing all the time is to making sure that they are valued, that they are a servant or whatever. And so if anything, they have doubts of their servant nature, right? So they have that and they're kind of over, over on it. Well, when the hell are you going to do stuff? <laughs> That's how I think about it. When are you going to go do real things? Like, for example, before you came in. I was working on this computer program that I was writing. Yeah, and I was fine. I was and fine with it. last time you came in last week, what was I doing? Working on the computer program. Yeah. On on freaking Wednesday, I think I went to work at you know eight or nine o'clock. I didn't. I, I you know worked all the way till like five or something like that. And then when I got home, guess what I did? <laughs> I worked on computer stuff all the way to ten o'clock. You think I that that's what you got to do in order to actually know something. You got to get at it. That's you, right. You got to do stuff. So, you know, to your point, like getting out and going and doing like other other places, well now you're going to be doing logistics. Now you're going to be, I don't know, running the forklift team or something and you gain this diversity of knowledge yeah. to actually to actually give you competence and confidence so that you can't some confidence you too. cannot stand up to anything that you don't have confidence in. And you can stand confident. Um, That's right. One, uh, there's two. There's two things here. I was getting ready to say something, but I've got a little bit more richer understanding. <laughs> you can stand on your own competence, but that's not enough because you also have to stand on on the Lord too, like yeah. for sure. And you have to have that kind of faith. Yeah. And that's yeah. really hard to do. I'll say unless you've got something to you know something to latch onto because yeah you're gonna get blown over. I think if you remember too. The Bible says he's not many mighty are called, not many noble. Well, that means royalty. Not many royalty are called, not many mighty are called, super strong. Yeah. He didn't call the Hercules in. He, did, he called these losers. I'm sorry, but he called losers. Yeah. Like Samson was a loser, but he had the anointing in his hair. And he was stupid to tell anybody, like, what was it, Delilah that yeah, cut it? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, he, but he had the smarts to say this. You know what? I'll let you cut my hair. I'll let you put me in handcuffs, but you can't follow me and kill me. If you agree that you won't kill me. And the reason why is he knew he would not be anointed to fight his own. He would not be anointed to fight his own brethren. He would be anointed to fight the enemy. Now, later on, she talked to him again, and he got in trouble. He got chained up. And he said, one more time, Lord, and his hair started to grow. And, you know, he probably had a buzz cut, so he had a little bit of hair, just enough to pull the pillars down and kill all those people. Uh, you know, kind of end his life as, as a, a called person. But here's the thing I'm saying, going back to when we even started. Yeah. If you're not, don't walk around to somebody and say, hey, are you really cold? I mean, we don't, we don't. We're oh, not the yeah. judge or the testers for God to tell. But you have to look at the leader and say, is he called to this or is he just 
managing, or is he just this or he just that? You let them decide, because I know by experience that you decide anyway. Of course you do. Sooner or later, you're going to look at it and go, yeah, I don't think he, I'm not going to say nothing. Well, but a, I think he's not called. And that that is a determination that only you can make for yourself with this person or that person. And you have to make a decision. Right there, you got to make a decision what you're going to do. Follow or, nah, yeah. go somewhere else. And so this is why we have all kinds of people. I just saw, I, I just saw a couple. They're in their fifth church in two years. Now, Nothing against them. Nice people. That's a lot. But that's a lot. I that's came a, here and they were in this lot, church, man. and then I heard they're over here. Well, that goes back. I mean, that goes back to what we were talking about a, a minute ago. That like you can't you can't know something unless you spent some time. <laughs> you can't not like the, the church we go to. I, I'd say if you don't go for a year, you don't know what's going on. Yeah, it takes way too long. So again, now we're back to uh, certain aspects that we talked about, and wow, we found this guy. He really is a great. Whatever and whatever and Ginny used to always say to me, "How come you never take their word for it?" I just read that it's this <laughs> and this, and I go, "I'm too old to take anybody's word for it. I've got to see it. I'm just that point where I've got to see." It. And so do you, by the way, people out there. You got to see it, and you know it. You've got to see it because you've been there and you saw it, and you go, "Ooh, I don't, ooh, I don't like that." <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting point because I mean, when I think about, okay, are you on board? So you're, you're talking about are you on board. You, you're really, you're really talking about. You're really speaking to a person to be, um, let's say, a responsible follower to some regard. That there, there's somebody out there that is is trying to lead something, maybe trying to lead something. Um, I would evaluate, I know for me, where are we going and again, this vision and yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to select that because if, if that's going somewhere, I'm not going find that out as quickly as possible because you're on the wrong train. So find out, are you on a train that's at least going in the direction? And then you want to find out whether or not you're on, you know, the, the slow the slow train or the fast train or the bumpy train or the train without tracks. That kind of gives me a diversion because I've always said I've always said that trains have one major big problem. They got a one track mind. Yeah. One track mind. Yeah, for sure. And so it's difficult because you can't be a one track mind. However, you gotta stay on the track. You got you gotta yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go. You gotta keep on track, you know what I mean? I mean you I mean, maybe the Lord leads you this way or that way, okay. But stay on track because if you get off track, you're a train wreck. And so, and you know, people follow train wrecks. Look, look at John J Jim Jones; they follow the train wreck yeah, right, yeah, right yeah. to nothing. You know, so we have to be. And he was on the ball in the beginning. Yeah, I, I feel so, like I, I need to maybe go read a book on on that topic because I'm I'd be very interested in where I felt like there had to have been like some shift or something. There was a shift. He it went. I can tell you from my experience, from okay. all my reading that I've read, and uh, you know, you got a bunch of books in here, but I've read. I wish I could put all my books up. I, I read. I read a lot. It used to be yeah. two, three a month. I don't do that many anymore because I'm too busy. Yeah. But of all I've seen and read, somewhere along the line, a leader fell because he took upon him something he should not have taken. Oh. If he took upon him something they should not have taken, like arrogance, like, hey, I'm, I'm all that. Hey, I'm something. Or, you know, I got a little freedom now, and I got a lot of money. Why can't I do this? I know a very, very rich pastor that said, why can't I do that? It doesn't say anywhere I can't do it. Well, I know, but that doesn't mean that you can do it just because it doesn't say you can't. You know, if you're going to be a leader, there's some kind of reason why you're taking this, and it's within the vision that you're talking about. And if it isn't, no. don't do it. A leader took on him something that he shouldn't have taken on. Every time I've seen a fall, David thought, well, I don't need to be out there in battle. I can hang out here. I'm the king. I'm this. Talking to himself. And so who knows? Well, I know somebody else was talking to him, the devil. And he got lax and he goes out and he sees Bathsheba and he gets big trouble. So, so every leader takes upon himself something that fell. 
that falls. Now, I'm not saying that's the, the end of them. It wasn't the end of David. David repented, et cetera, et cetera. But, but again, leaders that fall, and we got people, I, I don't know about you, who you talk with, but I'm talking to leaders uh, like in Facebook and friends of mine, uh, and I got hundreds and hundreds of friends that say, this leader, he fell. What do we say about that? You know, all kinds of opinions about that leader. But we've all had an experience and we feel bad for the leader that fell or screwed up. We know that he did. He, he might not have been my specific leader. But, oh, he fell. Oh, that's too bad. That's bad. Because once you've been seasoned, you've been around it a little bit. I feel sorry for the fallen. I, I don't condemn them. I, yeah. Uh, and you know, right now there's. Well, a, I'm just imagining though. Come on, I'm now. I'm now. I'm gonna. I agree with you on all this, but I'm now. I'm. I'm focused on Jim Jones here. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. Him up. I'm sitting there thinking like, at some point in time, well, I don't know this for. Absolute fact, Jim Jones, maybe somebody around him, but he preached I don't know the gospel that. in the beginning. I but, saw but, his sermon. But, um, somebody said, put the poison in. Well, again, he who took who did that? Why would you do that? Because that's at that point, now we're got like you've ju- you've totally jumped the rails. Because that there's a specific <laughs> point where that happens. Well, there was a pre there was a premeditation. Yep, that there was yep. an activity, and then there was like an order that was done. Yeah. Then distribute the poison. Well, it's that's like, madness. It's like poison. It's like drink. You're drinking just enjoyable, casual drink, but then the drink has you. You see, that's the trouble with uh, uh, possessions. I, you know, I got a lot possession. of crap in my house. You could burn it all. Man, what a great ne- what a great word. You get all these possessions, and then that possesses you. Yeah, Big that's right. difference. Yeah, that's right. And so you take on, a leader takes on something that he shouldn't have taken on, and then it has him. And that's what I've seen. Oh, yeah, sure. And that's what Jim Jones, he took on a little couple of things he thought was that from praise or whatever, and then it had him, and now he's he's on the wrong track, and he went all the way to the oblivion. So uh, I think that was obli- <laughs> destruction anyway. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I... I I think the diversion, and maybe next week we can get on pitfalls of leadership. Yeah, yeah, next week. A lot of pitfalls. But but a leader misses the boat when he takes on something he should not take on. You know, I think Jim Jones serving poison was probably not servant leadership. Not a good idea. <laughs> but, I mean, he, he was possessed. He was brought to a point of possession. Well, clearly. He was he was taken for a ride later on. Not in the beginning. In the beginning, he preached the message and the gospel. He was good. And a lot of gifted guys that say talented guys, you know, I always say that there are natural talent and there are talented guys. And then there are gifted people like uh, Mark Spitz won seven in the war. He's a gifted guy that can swim like crazy. The gifted body, the way he sleeked through the water, they said all this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gifted. And then, there, and then there's the, uh, the one that excels the gifted is the anointed because he's a loser. Samson was a stupid jerk, yeah. lustful loser. David, many times a loser. Uh, 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 Peter, disciple, was a loser. You know, these, these guys were losers. Mm. But when they were anointed. Yeah, and, and folks, you got to know what the anointing is. You got to know what God is saying in this person that he called where the anointing is. Because the anointing supersedes and is greater than talent or gift every time because it's his God's anointing. I mean, yeah. Samson was bigger and greater than Hercules, the mythical Hercules, you know, a, a unbelievable power. He grabbed the gates and carried them with him, went somewhere with him. Those gates were hundreds of thousands, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds. No man can do that. It was anointing. Anointing is a different story. And so one day maybe we could get around to that. And I got a lot of things about that but but it's anointing that makes the difference but and that's from being called you can't just take it on myself you know su- christians christians have a problem they think they can go to god's supermarket and say i'll take a couple of those gifts and i'll take a, a prophecy i'll take a word of knowledge here and i'll take one of those and i'll be an apostle and i'll be the you, that's not how it works <laughs> good luck with that you can't do that i mean you can try some have tried I'm thinking, I mean, knowing knowing someone's anointing directly has to do with how you actually employ them. Yeah. Like you put you put them, what tasks you would give them, what what areas that you would give them total ownership of, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And definitely I would say if you're not 
if you're not reading and understanding people on that, which you may not know until you work with the person long enough and you get to know the personality temperament and what like what's the nature of yeah what I, and one of the ways that I, I like to do this is I will um I would just find if everything is just kind of we're not doing anything there's no pressure what does that person gravitate to go do whatever's like, easiest yeah whatever they whatever they go do <laughs> and um like my wife for example she'll cook that's like her thing and even more abstractly than that it would be just doing like manual tasks that's her thing she wants to do manual tasks mm-hmm. and so that's really the thing that she's like best suited for yeah is like doing manual tasks and she'll bang things out way beyond most people like gardening work or you know potting trees or this or that um i've seen it many times when we we're in our farm in louisiana we uh I cut down like, I don't know, maybe about an acre of forest and uh, we we're clearing out all this brush. We made all these giant brush piles. And I went and rented a wood chipper, like a six inch toe behind big wood chipper. Yeah, yeah. And we basically would park it next to each one of these piles and we would just like, be t- we would toss it in. So we like pre-staged all this stuff ready to go so we could get as much done because we had like 20 million piles. Well. I definitely found out that day that my wife could work just as hard as me going full speed, no breaks. Because <laughs> she's perfectly fine. You just continue to... Yeah. And that, that's, her, that's her thing. So you can't for, beat that. I mean, for, for me, I'm, I've, I've got kind of a pressure behind me to go do it, but she's just, she's just perfectly fine to go work at that pace. Yeah. Yep. So, so we have to recognize that in people and in yeah. leaders. You know, somebody said, uh, the one problem you're having with leadership with this church or that church, I would hear somebody say, you're not in your own lane. You need to get in your lane. You have a lane to go in, and you're really good at that. Stay in your lane. Uh, we've heard that said before. I agree with that. Yeah, I think there's a certain um, calling, if you will, or temperament or talent or whatever on, on this kind of thing, you know, and stay in it. Stay in it. Don't... don't uh, Go away from that because uh, that's where you're. I guess good. maybe the one exception of that is when you're not in the right lane to begin with, and people <laughs> and people, you know, I mean, there, yeah. sometimes is where it says like, stay in your lane. It's like my lane is not this lane. Yeah, uh, but for sure, and I mean, the reality. I mean, this kind of goes back to back to the point. You can't possibly know what these. It's funny you're mentioning all these uh, anointments. If I'm not mistaken, all of those people, you almost could pretty much say they were not anointed until way further on. <laughs> So during all that other time, they had to do a lot of other stuff and get a lot of other experiences before. Before they got seasoned. <laughs> yeah, before they got seasoned. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you just don't know these things. I mean, some, you know, the few people who do, um, but even then, it's still, I mean, I don't know, life's pretty hard. Sometimes it's hard to know that it's like, like with me and computers, I mean, I think everybody around me always knew that I was like good with computers because... I was literally working with them since I was like six years old, but yeah. I didn't actually have any, and I mean zero professional experience with a computer until I was 26. So all the way up to that point, I didn't have any computer jobs and have any, <laughs> any official training, nothing. And then what I did was I got super motivated at a job, read a, a bunch of books on programming and then just applied for a job and then got it. And then... That's how that went. Well, I can remember when, uh, this is a personal thing, but it's true. Uh, I can remember I got a computer and you had to learn DOS. Yeah. There was no Windows. Sure. So I learned DOS and executables and I got down to the base of that and learned it. And I wanted to throw my computer out. I was in a third floor office yeah. of my house, three floors. And I said, this is, and I would yell out, this man-made piece of junk. And I would want <laughs> I want to throw it out, you know. That that by by the way is me every five seconds. Yeah. I, I mean, still I still have that yeah, feeling. Yeah. But, but I can't I, imagine somebody who's not sort of I finally conquered doing it. That. I conquered it and I come out with Windows. Yeah. And I went, what? What do you mean? What what? <laughs> Why didn't I wait? It was well, months, months know, of learning. You but know, you know what? I got the basic understanding of what Well, it's funny you say that because um people who are like like actually work with computers, they might as well be on DOS. Like for example, I mean, I use command line. I use command line prompts. Yeah. So it's funny. It's never really gone away. It's just you know the person who the way the people way the way people describe like the entire industry of computers is it's really a Wizard of Oz thing. 
there's a person who's yeah, doing know. something over here. There's a curtain. There's a wizard. And then there's a thing over here that's doing stuff. And you don't want to look behind the curtain yeah. because it doesn't look very nice. And it looks like... Well, I wanted to look it, behind it, the curtain. I wanted to kill him. Yes. <laughs> it looks like it looks like DOS. Yeah. That's what it looks like. That's what it still looks yeah. like that. It just is, it's a little higher level, so it's a little easier to work with, but it's more complicated now. It's actually way more complicated. Yeah. Um, well, as we go in technology, you're going to get that, you know. It's getting crazier and crazier. This is why I don't believe, um, you know, we're sort of drifting off topic, but to get to know me a little bit more, I, this is why I don't believe in, like, the end, endless progression of this society in this form. And I believe that computers and the adoption of yeah. and maybe the need to adopt ever higher levels of computers requires ever more numbers of people who can actually build and maintain the complexity and that number is not scaling well it's not keeping up it's That's, not even close yeah not and even so close. yes the people who are currently doing it they're always building higher abilities and talents and stuff like the number of computers i'm responsible for this or that i mean certainly i'm able to manage those things more now than ever before but at the end of the day like i went to uh in my mba I was telling them that I believe that this area in the next, let's say, 20 years to be on the safe side will depopulate. Uh, it's a very um, controversial opinion because nobody believes that. How could, how could any like rural area depopulate? Everybody's going to leave the cities and go, no, they're not. They will not. Because the day that resources become too expensive, they will not be here. They will be in the cities because that is where the cheapest resources will be. And yeah. so the people who will stay here, and we're already seeing this. This is what I was kind of saying the other night. We're already seeing that in order to be here, you got to want it. You have to want it because you won't be here. This place will kick you out in, and it'll just manifest in any million yeah. different ways. Yeah, I think, I think that's true, yeah. And so I, I'm like, okay, well, that's really the pattern. So once the resources go, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be that. And then I look around and go, there is a lot of open land here, and no one wants to do anything with it. I know. So I was, I was mentioning, I was like, it's going to depopulate. And I was, uh, we were talking about, like, farming or something. I'm like, yeah, the rural areas are going to depopulate. And, you know, everybody's, like, laughing at me. And then they're like, uh, and I was like, uh, who in the hell is actually going to farm any of this land? Like, who's going to maintain any of these rural places? <laughs> and they and their their answer, like the crowd's answer, was robots. Yeah, fucking robots. 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 That's so crazy because a robot is not. It's not a. It's not an organic being that is like self autonomous in the terms of. Sure, it it can pretend and look like it's autonomous, but it's not. It's actually a thing with a ever yeah. lower shelf life. That requires an army of people to maintain yeah. and at least one person to maintain that specific robot. Yeah. So then I asked a question. It, it, to me, it was so insane because I was the only person who was a computer person in the room. Well, who's going to maintain the robots? Because it ain't me. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> not interested. Yeah. And so the unsolved question is, is yeah, who's going to run all this? And no one. I want to take a moment to say, please say something. Please make comments. Yep. Please tell us. You guys are talking about a bunch of baloney, and you should try <laughs> this. Or tell us, hey, have you tried that? I let you touch on this. Uh, I'm thinking that that really gives us a good feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now that we're at close to the end here, I think that we need to encourage you to give us a comment or two. Yeah, I would definitely, I would echo the same. Definitely put comments down below, either in YouTube or on Facebook. Whatever, yeah. And um, we got some good ones. Appreciations. I appreciate the appreciation, but I like the suggestions too. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Tell us to get lost. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I would also say if there's anything that that you learned that you didn't know, or maybe even um, some of the things that we we're talking about that kind of sparked. Yeah. Like in you, because I definitely know many of the times that you were talking, it was just getting yeah. swirls of past experiences that were like oh geez i gotta get up and go because uh i've got a thing i gotta do okay but, well there's that i appreciate y'all catch the vision appreciate and uh, we'll see yeah. you next time it'll be fun <laughs>